Welcome to our channel Agla Same Schools. I am Aishwarya and I am back with another chapter of Social and Political Life. Today we will discuss chapter number 4th of Social and Political Life that is Understanding Laws. You guys must be familiar with several laws in specify the age of marriage, the age at which a person can vote and perhaps even the laws dealing with buying and selling of property. This chapter mainly deals with the rule of law and understanding how and when it came into existence. So, without wasting much time, let us start with our exercise and try to give appropriate solutions for the same. So, beginning with question number one, which says, write in your own words what you understand by the term rule of law. In your response, include a fictitious or real example of a violation of the rule of law? Answer. The term rule of law means the law cannot discriminate between persons on the basis of their religion, caste or gender. It states that all laws apply equally to all citizens of the country and no one can be above the law. This implies all persons in independent India are equal before the law. Neither a government official nor a wealthy person, nor even the president of the country is above the law. Any crime or violation of the law has a specific punishment as well as a process through which the guilt of the person has to be established. A fictitious example of this would be a government official helping his son go into hiding because his son has been given a 10-year jail sentence by a district court for a crime that he has committed. This is clearly a violation of rule of law, where a government official is trying to safeguard his son by misusing his political powers and violating the rule of law, which clearly states that every citizen is considered equal in the eyes of law, irrespective of his or her background. Now, moving on to question number two, state two reasons why historians refute the claim that the British introduced the rule of law in India? Answer: It is often believed that it was the British colonialists who introduced the rule of law in India. Historians have disputed this claim on several grounds, two of which include, first, that colonial law was arbitrary and second, that the Indian nationalists played a prominent role in the development of the legal sphere in British India. One example of the arbitrariness that continued to exist as a part of British law is the Sedition Act of 1870. The idea of sedition was very broadly understood within this act. Any person protesting or criticizing the British government could be arrested without due trial. Indian nationalists began protesting and criticizing the arbitrary use of authority by the British. and. This began the use of law to defend the legal rights of Indians. Question number three. Reread the storyboard on how a new law on domestic violence got passed. Describe in your own words the different ways in which women's group worked to make this happen. Answer. First of all, let us understand what domestic violence really means. It refers to the injury or harm or threat of injury or harm caused by an adult male, usually the husband, against his wife. Injury may be caused by physically beating up the woman or by emotionally abusing her. Abuse of the woman can also include verbal, sexual and economic abuse. Now, you may be thinking, what is Domestic Violence Act 2005 and why come into existence? The Protection of Women from Domestic Violence Act 2005 extends the understanding of the term domestic to include all women who live or have lived together in a shared household with a male member who is preparating the violence. This law protects the rights of women to go against violence. The storyboard explains different ways in which women's group work to make this happen. This starts with the following events. Kusum and Shazia are two social workers working for a women's organization. They heard testimonies of several women, including their colleagues, 
which made them realize that women want protection against being beaten, the right to continue living in a shared household, and often temporary relief. This hit them with the fact of implementing a new civil law to address the issue. After this, Lawyers Collective, a group of lawyers, law students, and activists, after nationwide consultant, took the lead in drafting the Domestic Violence Prevention and Protection Bill. This draft bill was widely circulated. According to them, the definition of law should include physical, economic, sexual, and verbal, and emotional abuse. The law should cover any women living within a shared domestic space. They should be protected from being evicted from the shared household and monetary relief for the same. Meetings were held with different organizations and finally the bill was introduced in parliament in 2002. But it did not cover the true definition of domestic violence. Nevertheless, they all decided to oppose the bill in its present form and start an online petition. Several women's organizations, National Commission for Women, made submissions to the Parliamentary Standing Committee. In December 2002, the Standing Committee submitted its recommendations to the Rajya Sabha and these were also tabled in the Lok Sabha. The committee's report accepted most of the demands of the women's group. Finally, a new bill was reintroduced in Parliament in 2005. After being passed in both houses of parliament, it was sent to the president for his assent. The Protection of Women from Domestic Violence Act came into effect in 2006. Now, question number four. Write in your own words, what do you understand by the following sentence? They also began fighting for greater equality and wanted to change the idea of law from a set of rules that they were forced to obey to law as including ideas of justice. Answer: In ancient India, there were innumerable and often overlapping local laws. Indian nationalists played a prominent role in the development of the legal sphere in British India. Under British rule, any person protesting or criticizing the British government could be, arrest could be arrested without due trial. Soon, Indian nationalists began protesting and criticizing the arbitrary use of authority by the British. They began fighting for their rights, demanding to change the idea of law from a set of rules that they were forced to obey to laws as including ideas of justice. They wanted for rule of law to be implemented to ensure the safety of their rights and equality among all. Therefore, this means that there were several ways in which Indians played a major role in the evolution of the rule of law during colonial period. So guys, this was all for this chapter. Hope you liked the video and if you did, then don't forget to like and share this video with your friends. If you still have any doubts regarding this chapter, then feel free to ask us in a comment section below. And yes, do not forget to subscribe to our channel for more NCRT videos of other subjects too. See you soon. Bye-bye.